Okay. All right. So Charlie, if you're listening to this, we are just going to do a bit of recap on chapter uh, 18C. Okay. Let's see. Um, we'll just go around the table. You guys uh, give me the f dash of x for each of these ones. Um, Blake, what's the answer for a? Uh, 12x to the power of 11. Yep. B. Sarah. Twenty one x to the power of six. Yep. Next one. Um five. Yep. Um four x. Not quite. Oh. Remember when you have a linear function. Just five. Just five, right? Next. Zero. Zero. Next. Yep, next. 50x to the power 4 plus uh, 12x to the power 3. Yep, last one. <laughs> um, Just do it turn by turn. 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Um, this is 8, uh, 16. Wait, uh, say that again? Just 8, yeah? Because you, you know, bring a power down only once. So it'll be 8 and then drop the power by 1, so 8x. Yeah, three. Yep, and then next one. Um. Multiplying by a fraction. What's 3 times 1 over 3? Three? 3. No. Wait, 3 times 1 over 3. 3 times 1 over 3. 3 1 1, yes This oh, is yeah. 3 <laughs> over 3 which is 1 So yes, so that would be, what's next? Um, x to the power of 2 Well, wait, wait uh, write the answer for this one first When you derive this one, what's the answer? Oh, negative 1 x to the power of 2 Yep, negative x to the power of 2 Yep um, And then now this one just step by step, right? Just, you know, turn by turn. Uh-huh. For negative one-half. Negative one-half. Yep. Um, negative half. X, and then? Plus zero. Plus zero. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, so that's all you guys will need to uh, recap because the other stuff you guys will see later. All right, we'll move on to... We're moving on to the next chapter. And this chapter 20 is the last chapter, well, sort of. It's sort of the last chapter for uh, Unit 2. Okay. So we're reaching the end of Unit 2 very, very soon. However, this is only the last chapter in terms of content only. So uh, after this will be the application questions. Yeah. So I have to cycle back, do more application questions, do the harder ones, complex familiar, complex unfamiliar stuff. All right. So we tell you guys for the Unit 2 exam, which I believe will be next term. Next term. So we basically have like a whole term for you guys to prepare for the unit two exam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you better do very well for that exam. All right. If you guys are this ahead of the content. Anyway, um, so at school, what chapter are you guys on now? I think we're starting eighteen. Starting eighteen. We haven't done it yet. I think we have the formative and then we do eighteen. Okay. This is with. Next, no, this coming week is week 8, right? I think it's... Yeah, week 9. Week 9? Yeah. And you also have like 10 weeks, right? Yeah. Okay. So two more weeks, yeah. They, they won't cover much. Yeah, so we'll, we'll continue to be ahead of the content. That's good. Okay, now moving on. Uh, 20. Chapter 20 is the last one. Oh, yeah. I skipped chapter 19. That's right. Yeah, so no, you guys... Yeah, chapter 19 is all the application questions. So we'll learn that later. Uh, we'll, we'll learn these rules first. This is the last, technically the last chapter that you're supposed to learn, but it's better to teach this one first. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, there's one chapter that I skipped. Is this one here. But I think I went through that in the, uh, the lesson last week, just to go through some of these questions. How do we do, say, question 3a? What do you think is the derivative? Do you just do it normally? Same rule, yes. Um, um, negative 6x um, and then that's negative 5 
drop power by one. Oh, negative one. No, drop it by one. So you minus one from the power. Oh, negative three. Yeah. And then it'd be uh, five x, negative five x, uh, x to the power negative two. And yeah. Plus zero. And plus zero. Yeah, that's right. Okay. How about uh, this one here? How do we work with this one? So first, we need to change this equation to something else. What would that be? Fx. Uh, yes, yes. So you do go, let fx equals to that. But let's just say we have that already. But you need to change that term to something else you can derive. Because you, know, you don't know how to derive a fraction yet when x is at the bottom. So how do we do that? Can we change it to some form where x is no longer at the bottom? 3 over 1. Um, 3 times x to what power? That's a hint. If it's 1 over... Two. Negative 2, yes. 3x power negative 2. Remember, negative power is 1 over the positive power. Okay, so yeah, and then that'll be plus 5x squared. Alright, Sarah, what is f dash x for this equation here? Negative 6x power negative 3. Mm -hmm. and 10 plus 10x. Plus 10. Plus 10x. Okay? So this is how you deal with um, ne uh, negative power. It's just basically the same rule. Just that uh, when you subtract it, be very careful that it, it gets more negative when you subtract one from it. Okay? And when you multiply down a negative number, just make sure you turn all the other numbers to negative. Okay. So yes, uh, that's the reason why I skipped that one. We'll do more practice on that later. Now, the next one, that the main one that we will do today is this thing called the chain rule. So there are three other rules for... Um, the derivative. So now that you have learned the basic ones, right? The basic how to uh, how to derive a polynomial function of x. Remember, polynomial is in the forms of ax power b, right? In this form here. So this is the basic basic one. But what? Um, so the chain rule is the concept of having a function in a function. Okay. So if you derive this one, you just get a times b to the power x of b minus one. Right, so you guys learned this rule. This is the basic rule that you guys learned uh, last week from chapter 18c. Now, the chain rule is uh, the idea of function in a function. I'll write it here. Function in a function. In or of a function. Function of a function, in function, in a function. So let's say if you have a normal, fx is equals to x squared. Right? What do you think f of um, gx look like? Well, actually, so f of, instead of just x in the brackets, it is now g of x. So you see, this is called the inner function, right? Because it's inside another function, okay? So fx is the main function, so the inner function is gx. So what would that look like? What do you guys think? Uh, I'm like that. No clue, Sarah? Yes, yes, so what would that look like? So remember, when, when you have something inside here instead of x, the idea is you're replacing x with whatever this is. Right? So now look at this one here. What is, is, is there an x there? Yes, there is an x there. So whenever you see an x, you put a bracket around it. Right? So normally it's just x squared, right? But instead of x squared, you replace the x with the inner function, gx. You see that? Yeah, so it's that function, everything squared. So for example, what is, so let's say given the same uh, fx, right? What is f of 3x? This will be brackets, 3x, everything squared. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and then what is f of, let's say, x plus 2? x plus 2 squared. x plus 2, everything squared. Yeah. Yeah. Or brackets x plus two close brackets square. All right. When you read that out, and then another one when you see a harder equation would be like say x cubed plus two x squared plus one for example. What would this one be? All of that squared. Is all of that squared? Yes. Plus two x squared plus one everything squared. Right. And note that this is only because the main function f x is x squared. Okay. Yeah. But you will, you will be using different functions of different outer functions. And so you need to substitute the values in accordingly. 
Um, just a quick recap, do you guys remember the fx plus h thing? This is the same concept, right? It's the same concept where the inner function is x plus h. So when you see x, you put x plus h. Remember that? From the derivative, yeah? What's the formula for the, the, the first principal derivative again? Um, quick recap. Uh, I can't remember. It was... What did you start with? H on the bottom. Yes, you have H on the bottom. Yep. Uh, and then it's... It's got a few in the gaps. Sarah, what do we start with here? You've done enough of those questions. Mm, lim H to 0. Lim H to 0, yes. And then what goes on the top? Blake? Is it... We recapped on this. Did you watch your videos again? No. I don't get time to. I, I've been struggling so much with my maths assignment because okay, I have no clue what to do. Because my teacher hasn't been... Last Friday, I was trying to ask for help and she was just so... I don't know. She came to me last in the, like, the last like, okay. 10 minutes of the lesson. That's okay. That's okay. Why didn't you send it to me on Friday after, the, after school? Because I, I literally have like nothing pretty much. Yeah, that's exactly why you have to send to me so I can give you some feedback so you can get started. Do you send it to you now? I've got... Yes, you... That, yeah, that, that's what I'm telling you. I'm not... Uh, okay, look, even though I asked for... I asked for like a complete version, right? But if you need help, you've got to send that to me so I can help you. Otherwise, how can I help you? Right. I don't even know what state your assignment is at. I would rather see the terrible state it is in seven days ago. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, if I see it seven days ago, give you some, some feedback, then you can just fix it in the next seven days. And by now, you've forgotten something. Yes. Yeah, that's why I keep on chasing after your assignment. Yes, Sarah? You said that there's no point in using R squared, but I... So, like, she helped me find the difference, um, but, like, I don't understand how she did it, but she told me, like, not to research it, so... Okay. I don't know what to... Because uh, I can't... Like, hmm. she found the difference from my first line, but, like, you have to create more lines, that's the whole point, but I... Can't find the difference of the other lines, so I don't know. What's your email question? Mm. It's admin at ATAR.academy. So, uh, the, did your teacher mean like differences that are different between the predicted point and the actual point, right? Mm. Yeah, you can do that with your calculator if you know if you know the equation. Yeah, she did it on Excel. Um, you can do that too on Excel, yeah, if you know the function, but. And what did she do with the difference? Um, she worked out like for the um, points that you plot when you find your equation for your line. Um, I think it's absolute of that minus the cases. Yeah, and so you get like a bunch of different uh, different values, right? You like plot that on a graph, and the further away it is from zero, the like. The yeah, the more difference it is. Yes, yes. And how do you compare, how do you, how, how does she mean, plan to compare two graphs? Like your manual one and then the... I think she kind of just explained that you can just say that the graph is a bit... That's why, right, that's what I'm telling you. The teachers uh, have normally have a lower expectation of the students, but when they are presented with a perfect, uh, you know, like a perfectly good argument and explanations of everything, they can't help but, you know, just be like, oh, oh yeah, that's good. Because the idea of the assignment is to test knowledge that you already know, which makes sense that, uh, which makes normal sense that you wouldn't want to research anything extra. However, I've seen assignments that research extra and normally they get higher marks because it's complex mathematical procedure. But normal teachers wouldn't say that because they would just want you to finish the assignment because the majority of kids don't even finish the assignment well. So that's why normal teachers, they want to you know, focus on the average, which is to get you to finish the assignment. Which is fair, you know, that, that's, that's, a fair, that's a fair point. Uh, and that's why your teacher also mentioned to you that uh, not to use a piecewise because she thinks it will be too much work. But I have seen the assignment using piecewise and they just, they could, they can finish it within the word count. There are ways to do that. So anyway, skip, uh, uh, skip past the piecewise thing. Um, for the R squared one, it, she, did, she said that it's not, um, it's not not allowed, right? It's like, you can do it. You can do it. It's just, I think um, probably quite a few people asked her about it, so she seemed pretty like she didn't wanna... about like the fact that you really don't need to use it at all. Mm, okay. 
Um, I mean, okay, look, at this point, uh, if you want to, you can talk about the differences. Uh, it's just not as, I think it's just not as robust as an assignment, but that's okay. This is your first assignment. The next one will be a lot different. Yeah, the, the next one also, end of this year, also the final assignment that you have for math methods. Normally that one for JPC is just one of the design assignments and it's quite standard. I've got a few examples of those. Yeah, it's just this one, the modeling one, there are many, many ways of doing it. So it's a bit harder to, um, to, see, to tell what is the right way of doing it. So yeah, um, just do what she said, that is okay. Tell the difference. Uh, basically you uh, put a function into Excel and then um, just generate the values and then do the calculation. That one minus that one, absolute value, what about what? Exactly what you just said. Right? And then you can plot the differences. So was your issue you cannot find difference for one of the functions? Yeah, when I plot the differences for the second graph I made, um, it just shows it as exponential, which it shouldn't, I think. Because like, when she made the first one, it like vary. Um, mm. But the one I made is just a straight exponential, so I don't know what I did wrong. You can send me the Excel for formula on the formula that you have on Excel, All right? So just snip, uh, just put it on the cell that has that formula, and then take a screenshot of like the spreadsheet so I can have a look, and also send me the Excel spreadsheet. Actually, maybe just send me the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, I'll open it and I'll have a look. Okay, I'll check that for you. Okay, anyway, uh, back to this one. So, first principle is lim of h to 0 of fx plus h minus fx over h. Okay, remember this? Yes. Yeah, you guys won't have to do this one now. It's just a recap of uh, fx plus h. Because the main one for today is the chain rule, which is the inner function and the outer function thing. So, the chain rule says something like this. Um, if y is equal to a function of x, okay, so this is the actual chain rule. If you have y as a function of x, then dy, uh, our function, um, and let me see which one shall I use here. Mm. Okay, yeah. All right, so if y is a function of a, an inner function of x, like that, right? Okay, but well, have a look first, Blake, before you write, have a look first. So watch closely as how, how, I, how I explain this one. Okay, then um, dy over dx. So when you derive this thing, right, the thing is, first you derive the outer function. You see the f there, right? That's the outer function, right? So when you derive it, you get f dash of whatever that's in the brackets. Okay, make sense? Yeah. Well, so far, f becomes f dash, it's just the derivative, right? And then whatever is inside that function stays exactly the same, okay? So it's still f dash of gx, but then you need to anti-derive this inner function, right? Anti-derive that, sorry, not anti-derive. You need to derive that, and then you multiply it into the main function. So that is multiplied by g dash of x, okay? Yeah, so once again, I'll explain. So first you derive the outer function, and then you, uh, and you keep whatever's inside the same, and then you multiply, multiply by the derivative of the inner function. All right, so I'll write the steps here. Derive outer function, All right? And then multiply the result. So multiply result by the derivative of the inner function of the inner function so these are the two steps that I normally ex uh, use to explain I'll give you guys some example so if you have y equals 2 and I'll write the inner and outer function a bit clearer so y equals to something power 3 let's say um, yeah so x squared plus x everything power 3 you see, anything in red is the outer function, right? And anything in blue is the inner function. So then, if I were to derive this, dy over dx, first, when you I derive the outer function, that would just be 3 times the bracket power 2. Right? Yeah? Make sense? Because if it's something power 3, it's just 3 times that thing power 2. And then whatever is inside is the same. And then I need to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function, which is 
there are two terms, so that would be in the brackets, 2x plus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah? So then the final, final answer, they normally arrange them in increasing power. So that would be 3 times 2x plus 1 times x squared plus x everything power 2. Like so. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Just rearranging it. Okay? The main step you guys need to pay attention to is how to get from here down to here. Alright, Sarah, any question? Mm -hmm. I just, why didn't you... Oh. No, I no, no question? Okay. Try to do one yourself. Okay, let's try this one. y is equals to brackets 2x squared plus 1, everything power 4. Alright, see if you can work this one out, dy over dx. Oh, actually, I'll use example. I'll use the example seven. Y equals to three x plus four. Everything power twenty. I have to help you out a little bit. I'll write the three x plus four in a function as a. So nineteen. Wait, not nineteen. Did you bring the power down no, first. 20, 20, um Three x stays the same, and then not to the power nineteen. Yeah. And then you do the times by, what is it? The, the derivative of 3x plus 4, of the inner function, which is? Oh, um, 3, um, x plus 4? No, just 3. Yeah, because when you derive this, you only get 3. Uh, right. yeah. So you have to do the outer derivative and then the inner function derivative. Okay, does that make sense, Sarah? Yeah, so then you just get 3 and then the final step is just to simplify by times 3 to the front. That would just be 60, 3x plus 4, everything to the power 19. Okay, so this is the fastest way of doing chain rule. However, some, uh, some questions can be quite complex. And so you would want to um, you want to break it down a little bit. There is a way to break that down. So for example, I'll use uh, I'll use the same example over here. Okay. So let's say so this is the uh, the chain rule using the Leibniz notation. Okay, this is the Leibniz notation. So it looks something like this: dy over dx is equals to now we use an intermediate variable u. So that's dy over du and then times by du over dx. Okay? So the way to remember this rule is that you know it's like two it's like two fractions, right? Right? Two fractions multiply and look, the fraction, this one has du at the bottom, this one has du on top. So think of them as they will cancel each other out. Yeah, and then you get dy over dx. Okay, so that's how you remember the formula, but it doesn't really work that way. Okay, because remember dy over the u is not a fraction. It means derive y with respect to u. And the other one is derive u with respect to x. So how does that work? So let's say y is equals to brackets 3x uh, squared plus 1, or say plus, yeah, plus 2x, everything power 10. Okay, you can't expand this. It's power 10. It's too much to expand. So the first step is let u be the inner function, 3x squared plus 2x. Okay, this is the inner function. So to get uh, to be to get started with uh, chain rule, you guys might want to use this um, this rule first. I should introduce you guys the faster one because you will ultimately have to get to that level to do unit three. But in unit two, they actually prefer you to use this notation to learn this initial notation first. So that u be the inner function, that means that y equals to u power 10. And then uh, you got u equals to 3x squared plus 2x. Any question? How did you get the u to the power 10? Because u is that whole thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that whole thing is u. Yeah? And now, remember we learned derive with respect to something. So what's dy over du then? You just derive this thing, right? Um, 10 u to the power 9. Yes, it's 10 u to the power 9, that's right. And then what's du over dx, Sarah? Um, 6 u to the power 
Yes, that's right. And remember the formula? The formula is just dy over du times by du over dx. So then your, I'll write it down here, dy over dx is always good to, if you use this notation, always write the formula. It goes to dy over du times du over dx. Always write the formula if you use this. Okay, because even if you mess up everything else, that gives you one mark in the exam. Okay, you can't afford losing one mark. Sometimes that mark is what bring you to the next bracket. I've had many students where they are up by one mark and they go from 11 out of 12 to, sorry, 11 out of 15 to 12 out of 15. That's a significant increase, one, a whole one a whole percent. By just getting one mark, it brings you to the next bracket. Anyway, so then that would be 10 u power 9 times by 6x plus 2. Any question? No. No. Is that all? The first way. Sorry? I'm going to do it the first way. Yeah, we can do it the first way. Now, uh, this notation will be handy if the question is quite difficult. Some, que some difficult questions, you will need to use this notation. You won't see any of, many of that here, but later on you will probably see it. So it's worth to, to try out this notation a few times first. Okay, uh, 10u, and remember what's u? u is 3x squared plus 2x, right? So then that would be 10 times 3x squared plus 2x, everything power 9 times by, um, we put a bracket, 6x plus 2. Okay, this is just to convert u back into what u is in terms of x. Okay. Yeah, and then after that will be 10 times 6x plus 2 uh, and then times by 3x squared plus 2x everything power 9. So yeah, as you can see, this is the longer way of doing the chain rule. Right? Um, the shorter way is to use this formula. This is, the, uh, this is my preferred method, okay? but conceptually this one is a little bit harder to, to remember to use. But yeah, it, it's the, the trick is just to remember two lines. Derive outer function and multiply results by the derivative of the inner function. Okay? Alright, now I want you guys to try example 8. I'll put it up example 8 here and uh, you guys give it a go. So Charlie, if you're listening to at this point, you can try out um, this example. Unless you're already way ahead, then just keep going. You know, you can even start on the questions if you want, if you're, if you're confident. I'll get to the questions later. Okay, for example, I'll write down the two notation. And then see which one you guys prefer. Which one makes more sense? You know, it's more like which one makes more sense to you. Do you have to simplify it all the way? Uh, which one? Um, if you're doing it, the function notation, right? You do need to simplify. Normally, they, um, yeah, normally they convert negative power to positive power.
Where did the x go? Because when you derive negative 5x, you just get negative 5. Right, linear function, constant, yeah, constant yeah. gradient. Oh, and then you made it dy over dx. Wait, which one? So I got the same... I got up to the same step as you. Mm -hmm. so I didn't know where to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this whole thing power negative 3. So that whole thing goes to the bottom with the power 3. Uh, yeah, not just the one. Like the whole bracket goes to the bottom. Move the whole bracket to the bottom. All right, Sarah, any question? No? Confident? Yeah? Hey, good. Get started on question 1. Is that right now? So, yes and no, how come you have two of these? Yeah. I don't know why I write that actually. Oh, that that one that should now. be one. Yeah, oh, that, well, that yeah. one should be rubbed out. Yeah, I've got to rub that one. Yeah. Time get started on question one. Know that when you do get to one i, you need to change the function a little bit in order to derive it. So know that for this one, there's no y, there's no fx. So what you would write is d over dx equals. Yeah, because this is another. Remember there are three notations for derivative: dy over dx, f dash x and d over the x. So d over the x just say d derivative equals. Right? If there's only one, if there's no y, no x, no, and there's no y, no fx, it's just go d over the x equals, and then you can write the derivative straight away. And make sure you simplify as well. Not question C is there's a negative there. For C, how did you get the derivative of negative 1? For C? Yeah. The derivative is... Uh, 
This is a linear function. The thing in front of x, so negative one. It's negative one, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so question E, the step I wrote at the bottom is an optional step. That's how to get to the textbook answer. They just take out the call, like the uh, a constant factor 5 from this expression. Okay, for question E. But yeah, but if you get to that step, that should generally be okay. Okay, so question G, uh, there are also a few optional steps to simplify that. Um, for now it's optional, but in the exam you might actually have to do it yourself. So it's to recognize a perfect square.
Why do you um F? Why yeah. do you always um swap the factors around? Because uh this bracket has no power, but this bracket has power three. So it has to go to front. Well, it's it's a good convention, and that's why you always see like something like x squared plus two x and not two x plus x squared. They they normally uh if it's like a simple term, they put the if it's like two terms, right? So add, add it or subtract it, they put the power, the highest power at the front. Yeah. So you see what the highest power is. But if it's like a bunch of factors, like four times something, times something, times something, they put the uh, brackets with the highest power at the back. Yeah. So they also see that, oh, that's, a, that's the highest power. So now that question I, you need to you know, most likely call it a function so that you can write, um, you can you can change it up before you actually derive it. Okay, so that's all question one. Okay, which question are you at now? No, I'm at 1H. One 1H, one Sarah? Um, how? Um, if it's to the power of negative 4, do you not have to move it? To the bottom? You mean of question I? So yes, yes and no. Um, in this question, if you move it to the, to the bottom, it is, it is okay as well. Uh, I just wanted to show you the, the textbook version. So the textbook can be quite inconsistent. Yeah, so if you move it to the bottom or you don't move it to the bottom, it's like they give you different kinds of answers. But yes, you are correct. Normally you would move this one to the bottom. Now for this specific question, the reason why they don't do it is because there's always an exception, right? And that is because of this here. So that would be like a function, like a fraction in a fraction, right? So if I were to move it to the bottom, if I were to convert every single, um, convert every single negative power to positive power, it actually looks something like this. So it would be like negative three, two x plus two over x squared. That's a fraction over x squared minus two over x everything power four fraction in a fraction. And that's why for this specific one, they don't move it to the bottom. Because if they were to change all the negative power to positive, they have a fraction in a fraction, which is not really that nice to look at. Yeah. So yeah, so that's why you know, sometimes the question can be quite indecisive uh, about how they, want to, how they want to write it. The convention is not exactly clear all the time. But that's why the questions that you guys will be doing will, uh, will normally be a bit more clear. Like the final answer is easier to check. I'll pause you guys there. I'll show you uh, one of the next question, which is I'll use, I'll use this example. Um, okay, not that one. Okay, I will use question four as an example. I'll show you guys why why um, the question you get in the exam will most likely be something like this, where the final answer is one answer. There's no way anyone can get a different answer. So look, question four a. Find the gradient of the curve with that equation at that point. You might have to do this. First, in order to derive that, you need to convert it to negative power, right? You don't yet know how to derive a fraction. 
Okay, yet you know learn that like in the second half of today. But uh, if you can convert it to a, a chain rule, it's normally a bit easier. So if you've got that, and then when you ask for the gradient, means derivative, right? Yeah, the derivative gives you what? Like, remember, the derivative gives you the something gradient, something? Function gradient. The gradient function. Oh. Yeah, the function of the gradient or the gradient function, right? So, so that's why I remember the gradient function and Sarah, what does it mean by a gradient function? So it's just the true gradient of that function? No, it's the function to find the gradient at any x value. Well, it's like you have a graph that looks like that, right? If it's here, if the x value is here, let's just say that's at the value two, this is the gradient. If the x value is here, it's at the value 1, this is the gradient. How do you find the gradient of two different ones without having to do like the complicated you know, f, fx plus h minus fx over h thing? Is to find the gradient function, aka the derivative. And then you just substitute the value 2 and then you get the gradient. And you substitute the value 1, you get the gradient over here. Okay, that's what it means by the gradient function. Okay, anyway, so that would be minus of this thing to the power minus 2 and then times by the derivative, which is 1. Right of the inner function, so that would be so. Now this one, Sarah, uh, there's no function uh, fraction in the fraction, so you would convert this to the bottom here. Okay. Any question? Yeah, because negative power means you know one over the positive power. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, what does it mean by at the point one one four? What does that mean? Substitute in? Yeah, substitute what? X. In Sub x equals 1. Yeah. yeah. Into, now, remember how I, I normally told you guys that it's like f dash of 1, right? You can do this if you go let fx equals 2. But let's just say you halfway through, you're like, oh, I forgot to call that function fx. That's fine. Just go sub f sub x equals 1 into dy over dx. This is the equivalent. But it's just a bit longer, right? Because normally you just write f dash of 1, for example, equals to something, something. All right? that's a lot shorter, but it's okay. You say you can write sub x equals 1 into dy over dx. So the reason why I teach you guys different rules is because in the exam, right, when you have different uh, kinds of questions, sometimes writing it this way is clearer, right? Um, it's clear when you look back, you're like, oh yeah, that's what I, what, that's what happened there. Because if you're not used to the notation f dash of one, if you accidentally forget in the middle of the exam, which you may very well do, because in the exam stress solution condition, you tend to forget things, right? So sub x equals one into the y over x might be easier on your brain. Read that and you're like, oh yeah, I know what is, what's happening there. Okay, that's why I teach you different methods, so, and use whatever you prefer. So then dy over dx would be equals to minus 1 over 1 plus 3 everything squared, which is minus 1 on 4. Okay, so that just means that, uh, sorry, 1 on 4 squared, which is minus 1 on 16. So it just means that at that point, let's just say this is the point where x equals to 1, right? The gradient here of that line is going down, is going down yes, at the rate of negative 1 over 16. Yeah, because negative means it's going down and the... Uh, Gradient here is negative 1 over 16. Well, technically, that's not the graph. The graph actually looks something like looks something like this. Okay? That make sense? Yeah. Yeah? So, you see, in the exam, they would not ask you to simply derive something that's like controversial or like, you know, like getting this answer or that answer. They wouldn't ask you to do something that's controversial. If it is potentially a controversial one with the negative power, they would ask you, find gradient of the curve at the point. So, then your final answer is a number. Whether you get the number or not, you know, it's, there's no way you're going to write the number in any different way, right? You definitely are not going to write it as a negative, negative 16 power negative 1, right? Yeah, Because that actually is not accepted. That is definitely not accepted. If it's a number, you always, always have to convert it to positive power. Yeah, always, if it's a number. Okay, so yeah. All right, we do like one last question. Uh, given this one, can you guys do question for B? All right, so I'll leave for A here, do question for B. And then we'll take a short break after we move on to the next concept.
Is it dx over dy? Or dy over dx? dy over dx. The one, uh, dy, y is the main variable, the, the one that's by itself. Uh, and then over something means with respect to something. Alright, finish up question um, 4b and then we'll take a short break. Right, I'll end the recording here. Uh, Charlie, if you're listening to this, make sure to take a break and then be sure to t uh, move on to the next recording straight away. Uh, you will need to cover everything first before you can actually get started on the questions or finishing all the questions.